Over the years, solving crimes, disappearances, or phenomena has started to rise amongst the internet communities. Amateur web sleuths have put their skills to the test in solving some strange mysteries. Number 10. One year ago, a redditor named Boneless Hot Dogs took to a subreddit called What Is This Thing after exploring an abandoned psychiatric hospital. It was during this exploration that he'd stumbled across a strange piece of equipment resembling a large oven or a vault, and not knowing what it was, he snapped a couple of pictures and posted them to the subreddit. The post was captioned, What is this large vessel I found in the basement of an old psychiatric hospital? Since the subreddit consists of around 2.7 million members, at least one of them was bound to know what this contraption was, and perhaps a few of them had worked in a psychiatric hospital or knew someone that did. Rocket AG commented that it looked like a rather large autoclave. Autoclaves are used in the sterilization of equipment in some industries, and the Redditor was right. Another user confirmed this assumption, stating that this immense construct was used to sterilize mattresses as well as bedding and that it looks the same as the ones that can be found at Ellis Island. The National Park Service posted an image of one such autoclave on their page, and detailed that the mattress sterilizer can be found on Island 3. This was where the contagious disease, isolation, and psychiatric wards were situated, which is why these mattresses needed such heavy cleaning. The mattresses would be loaded into the bin from one side, and both doors would be sealed, allowing for the items to be steam cleaned. Thereafter, they would be hung up in the room to dry and then placed back into use. On the main island, there are another three of these sterilizers on the topmost floor of the baggage and dormitory building. Another mystery, though, remained. When the poster had seen this object, attached to it had been an ammonia gauge. He explained in the comments that he was still in the process of trying to figure out what the purpose of the gauge was and had not seen anything about autoclaves using ammonia. Another commenter took a guess at what it could be. He theorized that the ammonia is used to increase the pH levels and was possibly used to increase the disinfectant that was used or possibly to speed up the process. It was further explained that ammonia would be suitable in this condition as it would be vented out from the autoclave and evaporate, whereas something like sodium hydroxide would leave behind a salt, in which case the items would need to be rinsed thoroughly. These objects were also found in the Herman Hospital in 1949. Labeled as the Great Wall of Autoclaves, four of these sterilization machines line the wall of this hospital. Most of the time, these objects are no bigger than the average microwave, but this was incredibly large, large enough for some to think that it was a crematorium. Number 9. A year ago, Robo6 came to the subreddit What Is This Thing to ask for assistance in solving a mystery. He posted an image of a bird's eye view of a field that appeared to have extraterrestrial-like markings spread all over. He asked the community what these markings were that he discovered on Google Maps. While most may have initially theorized that these markings were the works of aliens, it was soon discovered to be much more mundane than that. The comments lit up with a solution. Trial trenches, or surveying trenches as they're sometimes referred to. Geeky Penguin 91 explained that they are surveying trenches that are used in archaeological sites in order to conclude if there's anything significant beneath the field before it's built upon. The trial trenches are dug and archaeologists will investigate and determine if the area is worth a full excavation. It's essentially used to evaluate the archaeological potential of a site. Salivating Moron, however, contested this conclusion. They stated that they'd been an archaeologist and that something on this scale would have taken too much time and too much money. It was furthered that the archaeologists would not be allotted that much for a survey. Their guess has been that it was a soil, geophysical, or another natural resource survey and not related to archaeology, which they based off of the present project area that's been covered. Hurston, another commenter, explained that this image was from the United Kingdom and not America, who perhaps do things differently. Another archaeologist, this time from the UK, explained that eval trenches would be the result after geophysical survey. They're targeted to pick up features in the data as well as to cover a certain amount of the site. A commenter expressed further curiosity on the randomness of the patterns, 
and was answered by Jem the Wanderer, an archaeologist who stated that the patterns are done this way to avoid buried services, such as water pipes, cables, or gas pipes. He also explained that it's also used to target anomalies in the survey. In California, as stated by Zeltera the Red, an archaeologist, this is referred to as a subsurface test, or a geoarchaeological test. These trenches serve a better way to cover more ground and to investigate deeper. Alternatively, shovel testing or auger testing can also be used. Happy Rock expressed that one is able to see that the more precise-looking ones are trenches with dirt piles next to them, and the smeared ones where work has been concluded and the soil had been pushed back into the dugout trench. But the amount of trenches that have been dug raised concerns with some Redditors. Mysterious Constant admitted to not being an expert but explained that the survey trenches that he'd come across were much less extensive and there were fewer per field. He believes that something was found, or there was a good reason that there was something to find here. Jim the Wanderer appeared to support this idea, stating that the geophysics could have been inconclusive, or that it could have shown a bunch of hidden things beneath the surface and was distributed across the entire field. Trial trench evaluation is a rapid means of evaluating a site. Usually only 2-5% to of the site will be investigated but these trenches can become 50 meters long and 1.8 meters wide. But this may vary based on the existing information such as a geophysical survey. These trenches are usually dug out using mechanical excavators and are by no means the work of our outer space neighbors. Number 8. When the subject of aliens or extraterrestrials is brought up, one may immediately think of a green humanoid with a bulbous head, one eye, and three digits on each hand. But the insect, bird, and fish species that our planet contains seem alien enough to go looking for answers in other galaxies. PBJ Burger took to the What's This Thing subreddit after finding an odd creature that seemed to be not of this world. He even captioned it, Weird Squirming Living Lovecraftian Nightmare on our lawn chair this morning. The Redditor was referring to a strange looking creature that appeared to have tentacle-like appendages. Anosov responded to the poster's plea for identification with a link to a page referring to a hag moth. It turned out that this alien-like animal was actually the caterpillar stage of the hag moth, which is sometimes referred to as the monkey slug caterpillar. These caterpillars can be found all over eastern North America and probably go unnoticed given their size measured at about one inch in diameter. Fortunately, its adult stage is much more flattering. The caterpillar, although it may appear as a grotesque being, was designed using a clever technique. It's equipped with six hairy appendages on each side, and when not moving, the brown caterpillar can be easily mistaken for a crumpled up leaf. But when it moves and those hair appendages move about, it can be mistaken for a tarantula. Both of these adaptations were done in order to avoid predators. It was found that the reason these caterpillars take the form of a tarantula is that the birds in the area spend their winters in the tropic areas and are aware of the drawbacks of trying to eat a tarantula. Handles Things commented that turned into a moth and No Shade responded stating that we're looking at the belly of the caterpillar and that it has fuzzy false arms to make it appear as a leaf. Another user also explained that the larva excretes a casing and locks itself inside. It will then liquefy itself while all the parts of the body are rearranged, ultimately resulting in a moth. Picnic Life expressed that this reminded them of something out of the popular Netflix show Stranger Things, while Ridwall21 said the scariest larvae are moths. After the series of comments, PBJ Burger stated that the mystery had been solved and that the description and links that were provided appeared to resemble the creature and that he still wanted nothing to do with it. After PBJ Burger expressed fear of the creature, Political soothed him by saying that the creature is not only entirely harmless to people, but they don't cause any damage to crops, and they're really just an ugly but friendly little insect. Another viewer had asked for a video of the cryptid moving, but this was unable to be supplied. But another video of these strange caterpillars was obtained. The Lovecraftian cryptid found its identification through the Reddit community, who'd also expressed concern for the creature's well-being since it had been flipped on its back. Commenters were therefore locked thereafter, but it's believed that the caterpillar was relocated without being harmed. Number 7. 
Four years ago, JerryCat88 found himself on the What's This Thing subreddit after stumbling across what appears to be a door situated on the side of a sea wall in France. They shared an image of what they were speaking about, and in the bottom area, half a door can be seen peeping out of the waves. Jack Rats was quick to solve the case and guessed that it was a gate for stormwater to run off and drain into the ocean. That was supported quickly by picturesque sheep, who explained that they have to survey these drains on occasion and that the hinge was a giveaway as well as the amount of fall from the road above. Another user asked if it had been powered or was more of a check valve and War Mace was able to give the right answer. He explained that it was a check valve where rainwater drains out and the crashing waves do not cause saltwater fountains in the town. Picturesque sheep detailed that there are other drains that are powered and would most likely have a vertical gate on a thread instead of a check valve. This commenter made it clear that he does not operate them or design them, but that he measures where they are for engineers. Tacos Like Me asked why these doors exist or what the purpose is to have them. And again, picturesque sheep had the answer. He explained that rain can overwhelm normal drainage systems, especially when there's a heavy storm. Generally, the water goes off for treatment, but when it gets overwhelmed, it just dumps back into the environment, where it varies between road runoff containing oil or sewage, and sometimes a combination of both. He furthers that if there's any sewage going out of overflows untreated, then tanks should be installed to store this overflow. The water collected there can then be fed back through cleanup, when the heavy rains subside. A second reason is so that there's a clean surface runoff that comes from the roofs or from streams, and one would install this tank to stop the water backing into the pipe. JerryCat88 stated that this seemed like the likely answer, but had never seen them closed before. Jackrats answered this with a link showing an example of this type of drain that drains into a river. It was there that it was discovered that the check valve or drain is known as a flapgate valve or a floodgate gap. There are various different types of these contraptions that are used to filter water. Plinko Plonka also stated that these drains prevent debris from getting washed into the drain and blocking it up. Another explained that high tide can also cause water to run in the opposite direction and these closing gates stop such a thing from happening. Alternative names are also Tidal Flap or Tidal Gate, as a user suggested, along with a linked image. The hinged gate allows water to go in but not out again. Another commenter confirmed that these suggestions were correct and that the right term would be Flap Gate or Tide Gate, and that the one in the picture had two flaps. It was concluded that the seawall door was not the entrance to an underground bunker, lair, or secret base for the FBI or the New World Order, but was simply used as a deterrent and water storage. Number 6. Michael Slager, an ex-officer, faced a sentence of 20 years after an incident occurred with 50-year-old Walter Scott. A shaky video of the incident was taken by a witness, and in this video, Scott can be seen running away before being taken down by Slager who then threw a then unidentified item toward the man who was on the ground. A Reddit user, Daniel Vossard, found himself entangled in this entire case. He was a Canadian college student who saw the shaky video on his iPhone. And due to his studies in cinematography, he was able to stabilize a small section of the video, frame 394. In frame 394, the aforementioned item that was thrown towards the victim could now be seen clearly, and it was a taser, Slager's taser. The ex-officer reportedly stated that the man had taken his taser from him, resulting in the fatal occurrence. Vossart then replayed the stabilized footage where Slager could clearly be seen tossing the taser right next to Scott, a key piece of evidence in the whole case. Vossart was outraged at this and wanted Slager to be brought to justice. He then looped the footage and created a GIF that he posted to Reddit. The Reddit community responded with equal outrage, and a close friend of Vossard's, Rich Williamson, who also saw the GIF, decided to document the situation. Williamson expressed that the internet pushed Vossard to dig deeper, and he felt responsible for his narrative, and so it would only be revealed what happened by going through each frame and stabilizing the whole video. Williamson would later release a documentary called Frame 394, that bore witness to the moral quandaries of which Vossart had to face due to his efforts to clarify the incident. It was thanks to the Reddit user, as well as the Reddit community, that Slager had been brought to justice.
It was thereafter that the ex-officer was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Slager appealed the sentencing and stated that his lawyer had never told him about a plea deal that would have cut off a few years from the prison time. But the federal judge wrote in his ruling that he believed Slager's lawyer had in fact told him of every plea offer. The judge would then decline to throw out the sentencing of the ex-officer. The short documentary was taken to the subreddit Documentaries, where it received a variety of comments. One user stated that they were glad that someone had decided to follow up on a topic that's of controversy. They hoped that this would urge a change in the system. Others thanked the documentary creator for the dedication they had for bringing out the truth. It had been thanks to this documentary and the actions of Daniel Vossard that an ex-officer had been brought to justice. Number 5. An earworm or a brainworm refers to a song that gets stuck in one's mind. Scientists refer to it as a stuck tune syndrome or musical imagery repetition. An earworm is a piece of music that's of three or four bars that go around in circles in the mind. Sometimes fans cannot figure out what the song may be, or when they do hear it again they sometimes pull out their phones to try to get the internet to figure out what the song is, and even then it's too obscure to figure out. This was the case with one song that Redditors named Stay. Stay was a new wave song from the 1980s that no one was able to identify. This song became a topic of discussion across some Reddit communities, and for years it's remained unsolved. The origin of this song has been lost to time, and all that's known is that it had been recorded at a German radio station sometime between 1984 and 1986. For three years, people have been trying to solve this mystery. Eleven years ago, a post was made in the music subreddit where Turtle in Trenchcoat asked if anyone remembered that 80s tune that no one could identify. Well, thanks to Stefan, a Redditor who also listened to a local Swedish radio station, he'd recognized the song that everyone was trying to find. Finally, after many years, the Redditor found that the song was called Up on the Roof by Johanna Lindell. The show would then interview the singer and found that Stay was actually Up on the Roof from his 1985 album Ghost Rider. Turtle in Trenchcoat explained that two days before her post, the mystery song was mentioned on a Swedish radio show that was named PP3, and the listener, Stefan Peterson, recognized the song that they'd been referring to. An interview with Lindell was later released, and one commenter, Go Betweens, expressed gratitude and stated the following, saying, quote, That's it. I'm the one who was seeking this track not 11, but 27 years. I put it on my site, De Dini Devil, in 2002 to let other people solve the mystery. Then they said that the mystery was now solved and that they listened to the song the whole evening. Redditors praised Stefan in the comments section and the age-old mystery that had circulated the Reddit communities was finally solved. This mystery was also featured on the Mysterious Song subreddit and was captioned Johan Lindell on the roof Mysterious Song Story. A user posted a story regarding the missing song. He explained that it had been covered a few times on Reddit, but that they were not getting too much information about it. And so he wanted to share the story of the track that took more than 30 years to be found. It was said that someone recorded the song on a German radio, but that individual could not remember who the singer was. A link to an article from the Wall Street Journal was also shared, entitled Sweden's Sugar Man Gets a Taste of the Spotlight. The Sugar Man was referring to Lindell, who'd been a retiree who was working as a painter but he had no idea that for the last three decades his fans were searching for him. The nickname, Sweden's Sugar Man, was a tribute to the 2012 documentary Searching for the Sugar Man. In the comments of this post, a Reddit user linked the interview that the radio show had with Johan Lindell. The interview had taken place 10 years prior and was captioned as Johan Lindell, the man behind the mysterious song. It had been through his online exposure and Reddit that prompted the show to bring up the mystery and ultimately found the solution through a listener and social media user. The mystery was finally solved after a whole 30 years. Number 4. 10 years ago, the Tram Stop Dan posted an image to the What's This Thing subreddit. The image was that of a large box and had been full of some really odd illustrations of an event that the user had found near the trash bins. The box was around 29 inches by 38 inches on the exterior, and it was said to smell of dampness, as if it had been stored in a basement. The user named this box the Box of Crazy. Inside of it, there had been various pages, some of which were blank, and others that had detailed stories on an event. 
In a separate link, the Redditor posted various images of the strange contents that were inside of the case, including the letters. In one of the letters, an event of a possible alien abduction was detailed. It reveals that an image from Santos, Brazil of 1967 had been developed to reveal an otherworldly invasion. The writer spoke of the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization and the involvement of the U.S. military in this event. The image was said to be released under the name Lenticular Cloud Formations, but the author believed that they should have been called Clouds of Concealment, since the way the clouds were configured was not known to exist on Earth. Another image showed what appeared to be the blueprints of a heavy-duty roller bearing. Notes and annotations decorated the edge of the page. A technical drawing of the roller bearing was also added to the box. A world map showing airline routes was also found within, and smaller maps that were hand-drawn on a plastic material. The user began to come across more strange elements within the box, including another hand-drawn image of something that the artist had seen in Tampa Bay. Three words are clearly visible on this drawing, an extraterrestrial visitation. More depictions of a strange UFO that seemed to be accompanied by other saucers littered another page along with what appeared to be some biblical-looking angels. On the next page, one of the entities was rendered. It appeared to have four wings and four arms along with four heads. The middle head appeared human-like and the top head seemed to resemble a bird while the two remaining heads looked more like sheep or something similar. The entity also had cloven feet and wore a helmet. More depictions of these entities came after revealing that one of the heads appeared more like a lion and the other a cow. A more detailed sketch soon appeared of this strange creature whose wings now appeared to be just as alive as the heads were. In addition to these appendages, the being now had two tails. Various depictions of this beast were made along with more mechanical drawings of alien machines descending from the sky. With all of these drawings, there were also technical drawings of what appeared to be different aspects of these UFOs. Those who saw the post complimented the artist on the amazing depictions but were puzzled at what any of the letters or drawings meant. This mystery was truly intriguing for the Reddit community, and eventually one person was able to solve it in 2014. In one of the images, the artist had signed his name, which was found to be Daniel Christensen. The Redditor was able to track down someone named Elmer Arbov, who was 85 years old and, incredibly, was the nephew of Christensen, the writer and artist of the contents in the box. Arbov explained that his uncle had been obsessed with the book of Ezekiel and that he felt the need to create things based on his thoughts about it. But it was, however, found that the uncle had suffered from schizophrenia. Before the community knew that the creations were based on the book of Ezekiel, one of the commenters, Portable Biscuit, initially thought of Ezekiel's wheel after seeing one of the drawings. In addition, Ezekiel had also been described seeing things with four heads, that of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. Number 3. Across the online gaming community, many gamers would have most likely played the famous Red Dead Redemption 2, and those who have likely know that the game franchise is riddled with various mysteries. C Photograph 3998 brought up one such mystery on the game. He'd taken to the RDR2 subreddit with a description that was headed Mysterious Writing in an Alley near Blackwater Saloon. He asked the community if anyone else had ever found this. He'd never seen nor heard of it anywhere. After the user had a random encounter with a scruffy NPC, he was handed something and prompted to look at the strange writing that was written on the alley wall. The writing is about knee-high and looks like some sort of hieroglyphics. One of the symbols, according to the user, looks like a dragon, and another is a Chinese hut. C Photograph 3998 wanted to know more about this strange writing. Luckily, one Redditor had already solved this odd inscription years prior. Alex Earth was the Redditor who managed to decipher the game mystery. The solution was later covered by a YouTuber named Strange Man. According to a commenter, Winston Williamette, the puzzle consisted of Aztec hieroglyphics, and he was uncertain as to how one would know how to solve this cipher without having a degree in Mesoamerican writing systems. Alex Earth had seen this post as well as the comment and was happy to explain the solution to the community again. He started by saying that there was no reason to translate the hieroglyphics, and that the message was actually written in English, and that the hieroglyphics were just a stand-in. 
According to him, the only important part was that there were different symbols present here. Each pair of symbols was found to represent a letter in English. Alex Earth mapped these pairs to numbers and worked with them as numbers once he was able to do that. He further stated that other players had attempted to translate this as well and came up with the solution of North, East, South, and West, which led to some players believing that they were headed somewhere else. Solving this cipher required the use of the Polybius Square. The cipher makes use of digits going from 1 to 5, and as we know, they're to be read in pairs, which makes sense when using the Polybius Square method. The Polybius Square works in a grid formation. All the letters of the alphabet are present in the square. A to E is in line 1, and F to K is in line 2, and so on. The first number in the pair reads the vertical side, while the second number plots the horizontal side, in which case a letter is revealed. The first letter, using the first two numbers, equals the letter B. The first word would then read blessed if the method is applied. After completing the sequence, it was revealed that the inscription read, Blessed are the peacemakers. This quote was part of what was written on a grave in the game, and the name that coincides it refers to the Aztec goddess who was in another game and also makes an appearance in GTA Online in a painting. Number 2. Many people who use a shower curtain will know of the strange phenomenon that occurs where the curtain blows into the shower while the water is on. This is the issue that Arrow King presented on the Today I Learned subreddit, stating that the shower curtain effect, where the shower blows inward, is not something that's entirely understood. A few other users immediately knew the answer, aerodynamics. Kunkani explained that this is just a simple example of aerodynamics, where hot air rises when the hot water hits the cold bottom and it creates steam, as well as a pool of heat. The heat then rises upward, carrying oxygen particles along with it, as well as hydrogen in the form of steam, ultimately lifting the curtain. Ebriate supported this statement and called it the Venturi effect, and said that if the gap at the top had been closed, the curtain would bow outward. The Venturi effect is not a well-known term, but it is a feature in our everyday lives, from vacuum cleaners to diffusers. The effect has been defined as the drop in static pressure of a liquid when it flows subsonically through a constricted area. Another user explained that hot air rises and cool air rushes to take its place, which affects the movement of the curtain. According to Kincanny, Reddit solved another ancient mystery. Sheriff of West Addison then commented that he hates to burst everyone's bubble, but the hotel in which he stayed is broken and usually blasts cold water. He sometimes leaves it running to warm up for a while, but the same curtain effect happens, and he assumes that the effect has nothing to do with hot water. He was corrected by another user, stating that the same effect can happen with cold water, since the temperature of the water and that of the air are different. Arrow King was not so convinced, and stated that since there are four theories, this means that the case is still a mystery. But according to other Reddit users, the mystery has been solved. The shower curtain effect is the formal title that's been given to this phenomenon, where the shower curtain moves inward. The poster was right, there were a few theories, but only one of them had won the Nobel Prize. Theory 1 suggested the difference in air density. The movement of the curtain may be due to the air pressure on opposite sides of the curtain. The warm water that comes from the shower raises the temperature of the surrounding air, and is less dense than cold water which allows it to rise to the top. When at the top, the excited atoms will exit between the gap of the ceiling and the hangar, which creates low pressure on the inside. The second theory refers to Bernoulli's principle relating to the change in velocity of the file with pressure changes. This suggests that the air that's coming in from the other side of the curtain through the gap gets accelerated by the falling water, causing a movement in the curtain. The third theory, the one that won the Nobel Prize, was that of David Schmidt. David suggested that the shower behaves like a vortex. A vortex refers to a mass of fluid that revolves around a center axis, such as tornadoes or cyclones. He explains that this is precisely what occurs in the shower. All three of these theories, though, make a common argument. This makes Ebriate's comment a viable solution. If the gap at the top were closed, the shower may bow outward. Number 1. In July of 2023, a strange object washed up on a beach and the story was taken to Reddit. The caption read, Military called in to help identify a giant cylinder washed up on WA Beach. 
but it was, however, a Redditor who was able to figure out what this enigmatic object was. The six-foot metallic cylinder was found on a beach at Greenhead, a town of less than 300 people. The item had cables or wires protruding from it, causing some to believe that it was a part of the missing flight MH370. But this theory was soon dismissed, after the Western Australia police had confirmed that this part did not come from a commercial aircraft. But one Redditor noted that the piece seemed a little too similar to the third stage of India's Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle rocket. This was supported by Dr. Alice Gorman, who is an expert in space archaeology at Flinders University. She explained that the object was a fuel cylinder and confirmed that it had come from the third stage of that rocket that the Redditor had referred to. When a rocket has been launched, the fuel tank drops off and the fuel is expended. Usually the tank then falls into the ocean, such as how this one did as it appeared to have been on the ocean floor for quite some time. It's guessed that a storm dislodged the artifact and sent it to the shore. It's believed that this was possibly part of a series of launches that were set in the 2010s. The individual who solved the case was Fizzrock, who commented on a Reddit post that was made in the Space subreddit by General Armadillo72. Fizzrock additionally added a link showing a side-by-side -side comparison of India's rocket, and it lined up perfectly. It was further added that PSLV had launched 57 times, and determining which launch this fuel tank came from would be near impossible, especially since there are no serial numbers. Additionally, based on the biofouling, the object may have been floating around for months, but it had likely been doing so for years. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.